Another game, another city, this time changing locations completely. We move over to Hangzhou and another beautiful arena in China. And of course, the LGD arena upcoming their matchup to V5. This is Brento Raz Muhammad. I'm Jake Asterix, Ozzy Penko. And it's going to be a long night for you. So sit back, relax, and get ready for this one. Yeah, if you have bubble tea, if you have literally anything mm. in tea form, Take a sip out of it. Take a sip of tea. I'm just, I just want tea, <laughs> if, you <know laughs> if you don't actually know. Uh, but that being said, yeah, it's going to be real fun to just be able to see LGD mm. go up against V5. Because if I haven't put up the hype train just yet, this team took down Invictus Gaming. That's, That's all right. you need to know. Just roll the clip. Let <laughs> me see it happen in real time. Because IG, sure, they brought out West. You could say that one thing. They had Duke in game one. Okay. But they had the shine game too. And it was really just the coordination that LGD had alongside Fiddlesticks. This was legitimately the first real Fiddlesticks game that I see yeah. in the world that didn't just hard in in team fight. So I thought that RD came out really well. I thought the new identity for LGD, like the slower play that they had around Condi, came into light. On top of that, even though I mentioned him, take a look at Kramer. Kramer and this series went off. He oh, was yeah. so confident. There were actually so many insane plays that you got to see out of him just going front to back. Yuki as well. You get to see small instances where Yuki comes out. This was a great moment from Yuki, if I remember correctly. But the Galio goes in, but he's trying to find a way out. That doesn't that let him go. Yuki. That's just such a good portal jump. Doesn't let him go. I think the potential for LGD is there. Mm. The fact that they went up against Invictus Gaming and took them out. And then the, the last series that they had was FPX, and I thought they were going to do it too. That's right. Went to three games against the undefeated FPX. They're looking better, and a lot of that just comes down to the fact that I'll start with number one, the carries. Mm. Carries are big. Uh, specifically, I'll say uh, Kramer had an, a phenomenal one. But also, you have the solo kill king of Yuki, who's been there for two years, and that's the second year. And he has the most solo kills in the LPL yes. by two in a losing squad yeah you don't see that you don't see someone still dominating the laning phase having a great time while the team is still below well below 500 so it's insane to see that the individual players are that strong and it's mostly because the new team is just starting to gel the carries are feeling a lot more confidence now that they know that the supporting players and honestly the supporting staff uh is there alongside them. And if we do take a step back and talk about those shot callers, it is usually PYL and Condi, or, or vice versa, depending who's actually running. Now, a couple of conflicts moving into this roster when Condi joined for 2019, and PYL was still the shot caller. I'm sure those are where the issues arise, but perhaps we'll take a look at the V5 roster. They are the away team this time. You know, Ben 4, Korn, and Y4, and Lay to round out your bottom line. And this feels like a little bit of a, you know, hit them. Hit them hard. Let them know that they made a mistake. Why for Jinu? You're coming back to the wrong part of town. Oh, yeah. You thought you left these parts? <laughs> We're going to leave you in a body bag. It's insane to see that Jinu and Y4 making the decision to leave the squad. They were the highlight players of 2018 LGD, but now they're coming back to Hangzhou with a new banner. And look at how they've changed. Lies over from TOP in 2018. Condi from WE. You've got Yuki in the mid lane. Kramer from a Freak of Freaks last year. And RD, who's now made his position in the support. And it's looking like LGD ain't bleeding that much. Yep. I thought when they left, or at least lost those players, you're like, okay, Lies is a downgrade. Just to, to be 100. And then be able to talk about uh, Y4. Y4 and Kramer, it feels like they side graded, but now they have the communication errors. But that is already starting to find its way out. It seems like Lies understands his role. Reminds me of his play on TOP, where he can come out in team fights. Lies is the, is the team fighter and the communicator. You always are, always 100% knowing what Lies wants out of you, or what you want out of Lies. I yep. think he's a great role player now. And then if you look to the real parts of the map, you still have Yuki, franchise player for the team. Kramer is starting to really have highlight moments for his team. And then major shot caller in Condi, and RD, who honestly is uh, becoming a real uh, support for the team, but he changed from AD carry to support when he was on JD. Yeah. And he was on the bench just waiting for his moment. And I feel like this moment is really coming true. He's been duoing with Kramer a lot in Korean uh, solo queue. And it's starting to show. Their laning phase is starting pre pretty good. On that note as well, uh, for RD especially, it took some while for this team to bring him in. It was PYL who started out as always. Yep. You know, the same old shot calling, the, the same old support player who, you know, is world's experience. 
It makes sense. Bring in PYL. Yeah, I, the decision to move away from PYL is one of the riskier ones that they've had. I know from an organization's perspective, in the past, when there's always that threat of getting relegated, you're like, keep the veterans, my God, keep the veterans at yep. all times. Don't change everything, because that's the way you got kicked out of this, the league. And they've had some close calls. Franchise makes it so you have that safety now. You can look to other members to see if you can change something, a core issue, something huge. And they were able to do that now, really testing, A, increasing the mechanics. I think the bottom lane, mechanically speaking, RD is a stronger player than PYL. But also, shot calling wise, you want Condi. Yep. Condi is a world semifinalist. And sure, PYL's gone to worlds, but hasn't gone that deep. Hasn't been there in some time. And Condi has that recency and also the best real jungler. But being able to talk about a solo kill king right in front of your face, Yuki yeah. went wild. Eight solo kills, number one. As you said, the of the split. on a losing squad, the only series that LGD have picked up is against Invictus Gaming. They've taken a game off FPX, though. That is the recency there. And in both of those series, LGD, Yuki was able to make his stand again. The solo kill king, let's see what he takes into the mid lane as we move in. It's not gonna be the Zoe, and that makes perfect sense. Korn and Yuki Zoe have been the highlight players right now. So Zoe getting banned immediately makes a lot of sense, and it sets the tone for both of these organizations. It's not coming through. And if Zoe comes through, you better have a really <laughs> good hand to pay off for it. On that note as well, there's a lot of versatility on Korn. He's picked the Aatrox mid, so whether we go for something a little bit more aggressive as the first pick, Lucian is locked in for Y4. And also the Camille too, and the last person that decided to throw the Camille top lane felt the real you know, the blade, the broken blade, oh. if I want to say. The oh. Riven counter pick. That's right. I will say, though, that's a Camille jump. There's no way you're picking Camille no, top lane. Not after what you saw of, of Jinu. Especially since it's far more uh, reliable to put Camille in the jungle. So, that being said, I love the first pick here from Victory 5. Going for the Lucian, it's actually just a great uh, flex pick as well for Jinu. Yeah. So, you have the carry top laner that's willing to try anything. And... You can just throw it bottom lane and give yourself the multitude of supports. Pick a top cat, pick a Braum. You don't have to go towards an Alistar. I think LGD would probably want to go towards a mage support here. You could also pick that Gragas that is a mage tank support. And it has been flexed around as well. So keep LGD guessing as they pick that LeBlanc. And the Urgot locked in the first time tonight we've seen him, considering it's been banned all three games of the previous series. It's just a broken champ at the moment. I would say that the Gragas has been a Ben 4 special as of late. When he first came into the league, he was such a great Lee Sim player. Still think he is. It's just that right now, Gragas is the facilitator that really creates a level of consistency in his team. Yep. They know exactly what they can get out of him. Great engage, great disengage, can do it all for your team. Great damage early on when you go through the AP route. So for V5, they got themselves three very strong picks here. Especially when you know that that Camille was probably going to have to go jungle. Gragas into Camille can be very painful for the Camille, interrupting the Hookchock midway. Uh, we're now onto the support bans, considering how this game looks so far for V5. The Tarm Kench's ban trying to allude to the fact that that could still be the Gragas support, even though we know Ben 4 is prioritized on it. I love the Tom Kench uh, ban. I think they shouldn't ban Galio with the Camille out there. I think a Galio support would be so good for Victory 5 to deal with. Get the yep. Braum Lucian out there and you can really punish it. And if you throw the Galio mid lane, then you have a great position for Korra to actually look to punish into that. I think that you are now limiting Yuki. Now Yuki, of course, has the LeBlanc pick, so not even a possibility there. I'm just going to walk that back. But oh, the Yorick oh, ban. There we go. Lies has been one of the few to pick it up in the LPL. Uh, do not show us the Malphite. We know that was played uh, over in the LEC, I believe, or maybe, no, it was Solo up in the top lane. RD is a support mage player. He's come out with so many Morgana options. It makes a lot of sense that they're holding his pick, saying that we want to see the full composition from Victory 5 first before we actually pick what RD wants. Because remember, that's an Ezreal AD carry. Yep. And Ezreal's biggest trait is early on in the lane phase. He is so safe. He is the safest AD carry you can have, so if you want a bard even, you can send him across the map. <laughs> you know, take a take a note from uh, Road right now, who's sitting on the bench for Victory 5. So Galio gets picked up here for Victory 5. I wonder if RD has something that he's willing to throw out. Something spicy. Remember that Fiddlesticks is still available, so why not? That's true. At this point, V5. You're not going to do they it. They took your suggestion, Rans, first of all. Surely Look, not. Jinu is just flexing, all right? He's saying, I can do anything. Lay, 
Oh, please do Show it. me my oh, options. Oh, yes. All right. That's what you want to see. Jinu, fun facts for you all out there, has a 26 KDA on Riven. Two games played, 100% win rate in the LPL. LGD need to flex back, and the way you flex back is probably with a Fiddlesticks hit. Yeah, Fiddlesticks would make sense for them. Bottom lane would be a lot okay. easier. But we still have to talk about <laughs> it, man. We still have what? to talk about Jinu. For people who don't know this man, in solo queue, when he first got found, 2014, all that. His name was Lord Master King in the Korean server. He was a Riven content creator. <laughs> he was Challenger Riven. He has his YouTube videos out there. You could even search it if you want to, if you have the time to do it. He is a Riven one trick, true, and, and he's able to bring it out. You see yep. it globally, you know, Viper finding the ability to pick Riven whenever he can. Low damage, honestly, uh, in the top side of the map in this meta. He can do well versus the Scion, and if if, if the Camille, if he comes up, if he so much as bre like just <laughs> breathes top lane, he's like, hi, no, <laughs> just cuts it down. There are so many interactions with Riven versus Camille that makes it so hard for Camille to ever find an engage point yeah. or to disengage that you are committing to a fight if you are next to Riven. I'm excited to see how this plays out because with another Riven pick, Jinu has... I guess expectations to live up to again when we first saw the Renekton in the LPL and it was nowhere else granted. We said, right, expectations on this pick to go well. No one else in the LPL have, have, has flexed towards that ribbon. And taking it into the Sion top lane, Jinu is going to have an absolute ball. Especially if Ben 4 comes up, that 2v2. Already mentioned the Camille interaction. You're back in home court, baby. Mm -hmm. This reminds me today, if you watch the NBA, you got to see DeMar DeRozan go back to Toronto and he faced his loss. He, yep. You know, a little bit of an embarrassing way to end out that game, too. If Jinu's a fan, man, he doesn't want to lose in the same fashion. Yeah. He wants to go back to Hangzhou with his key pick <laughs> and bringing back that victory. They're called Victory 5 for a reason. If he was sold on the fact that they were going to be a winning team, the start of this split wasn't very promising. But at least take down lies. At least take down your replacement. Make them look bad. Make it look like you were the better option all along. That's what they're banking on. Victory 5 in the away arena. LGD and Hangzhou will have the crowd behind them as we go into game one with the Riven. And LGD might not be favored. Uh oh. Of course. Mark S. Riven in a brush a lot of people in and he's like maybe I'll get him top fiddlestick passive is the most OP in the game <laughs> said no one ever <laughs> well, ah yes both teams try get me out of here a lot of cheese on the map mm -hmm. that's what the, that's, you smell that mm. there's some gouda yeah get him out of here well Jimmy's just gonna go back to the top side of the map so uh, cheese has fermented long enough Curious to see, we do have Conqueror on the Riven. I mean, what else would you take? And really the biggest thing is you get to see a lot of the Rivens just stack cooldown reduction. So easy to do now in the meta. Yeah. Um, a lot of sustain that you could see already going to the inspiration tree. So easy to attain. I think one of the uh, tough things that are not really being seen or, or spoken about is how easy it is to pick up inspiration utility, either just be it the mana yeah. that you get off of it, the free push that you have. Um, or just the gold. Outright, if you don't want to pick up boots, you can just come back, go into the map, and just have the magical footwear. So, in this instance, uh, you gotta expect the cooldown reduction to be a major priority for Riven. Ben 4, though, on a ward. Yeah. Kramer and RD just playing with him as well. Even though they're both level 1, RD throws out the crow. Condi's here too. Now, the Poro will spot him if he goes into the brush, but Ben Fall still has no idea where Condi is. I believe he's in the... No, he's actually walked away from the try and will be spotted out by the Poro ward. He should start to really uh, farm up. He ranked up his W, so he doesn't either have... He, he doesn't either have his E or his Q. So I would assume Q simply because if you're trying to gank with W and Q on a Greg, is, that's trolling. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he's pretty much committed to farming at this point. You shouldn't really be seeing him on the map for a little bit. I'm curious to see who influences the top side first because it's just bottom focus at the moment and that's worth. Yeah, Kofi Warhammer and uh, Kindle Gem are always like our major priorities here because it's pretty yep. easy to pick up going into Black Lever, but also you just get your 
the entire kit up so much faster, actually. I was about to say ultimate, but literally everything. Yeah, everything, yeah. You get the shield up so much faster, meaning you can mitigate damage and trade or farm a lot more 20%. quickly. It's crazy. Yeah. So just think about that. If you look at an, a, a Riven's item set, you're like, wow, that's really janky. No, that's there for a reason. The recipes for Riven are so good. Although it seems to be about Riven this game for V5, it's about the bottom lane. Flashed on there from lane, gets a double taunt. Andy has to flash away himself. Ignites there One onto more. him. The fiddle goes down first. Y4 with first blood. Kramer can't get anywhere near him. It was hard. It took some time. It took three flashes to get <laughs> the job done. But the job was finished. There is going to be some payback though. Condi going topside and getting blue buff. That's actually going to be pretty tough for Ben 4 once he gets back onto the map. Yep. But he got the kill on Fiddlesticks. That's what counts. He's hanging around for so long in that bottom lane. You wanted him to find something there eventually. Any kind of good news story that he did. And First Blood went over to Y4. All right, let's count them. The flashes. That's what I mean, right? Here we go. This one's easy. Boom. One. Yeah, that's one. Two. All right, why are you flashing away, Heal. son? Flash. Get the Flash. second one. Even the third one. I need some damage on that one. Ooh. Count them as they hatch. RD now has no summoners whatsoever. Oh, he thought he can get there on time. Cute. You know, Ben 4 is running over there using his uh, Predator. Predator. Maybe yeah, I can yeah. get there. Not. It's been taken a long time ago. So now where? He's like, all right. Where do I go next? Wolves are still there. That's nice for Ben 4. Con Condi does have a bit of a lead because of that. So. And remember, uh, camps have a 2 minute 30 respawn time. Yep. So if he's uh, taking... Wolf camp, I'm pretty sure he's gonna do Grom either into gank or just go straight back bottom lane so he bottom side so he can do Krug, I believe. I'm trying to figure out where he started initially uh, outside of his because I think he did red buff and gank. If he did red buff and gank, that actually makes it so much harder for him to path back bottom side. True. Probably makes a lot more sense that he's actually just gonna be top side now. Makes perfect sense that he would be here right now in the brush, still has a bit of time to kill. Remember, no camps, like you said, Raz. We'll get to the furthest push. Oh yeah, yeah. You get closer. Gino's you don't need to let this push it as well. Look how he look how healthy you are. Go back. Yeah. Just auto here. attack. He's level three. Look Life is right next Boom. to him. Do it. Body slam. Bops in. Lies. Nowhere to go. Run home, little child. Jinu gets the kill as well. That's the ribbon play you want to see. Yeah. Perfect timing. You're like, all right, that minion. Don't take that minion. Oh, he, <laughs> got it. he got. It. He got. The, he got the 14 gold. It pushes into him. <laughs> That's great. Uh, but yeah, you got the last hit on the uh, minion, which uh, set it up Ben for his gank excellently. And it's tough. You're a scion, and you're just trying to just farm up. Honestly, every time a scion tries to trade into a ribbon, he ends up pushing the wave, yeah. which makes it all the more easy for ribbon to deal with. If you're trying to queue, you're like, ah, oh, no, I've just hit the entire minion wave. <laughs> so I'm pushing in closer and closer. Is that, it's very difficult for a scion to gain control of the minion wave. Ventral's been pretty active though so far in this game after going top and getting the kill. Now into the bottom side, Vision prioritized again towards the river. This is the Mountain Drake first, but camps are now up. We asked this question before, Raz, that Ben Fort will go from Raptors most likely towards Krugs back into red and look for a back close to that Cinderhulk. And if you're looking back to the top lane too, essentially what we talked about earlier on is coming to reality. 20% CDR is going to happen. Doesn't have the Kindle gem just yet, but has the Cold Fields Warhammer, so. He's gotten to a point where he's so comfortable in lane. Was already even before that. And that's yeah. the weakest point of Riven, is uh, before she ends up getting her CDR. So now she can just skate through the laning phase. What is working at the moment for LGD? An early game that they're a thousand gold behind. Mid lane is the push there for Yuki. The solo kill king is 10 CS up on Korn, who's opted in for a cull early on. And not often that you see Korn on. Actually, no, I take that. That's a lie. Something like the Aatrox Urgot fits his style very well at the moment. True, true. I'm just saying right now, what do you do if you're uh, Vici Gaming? It's just like, it's literally the solo kill king versus the, the Lord Master King. I'm just saying, that, that solo queue ID, what are you even doing? How yeah. young are you? Are you 13 years old? <laughs> I know my, uh, I've had some poor choices early on. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. so people know out there that my Maple Story name it used to be oh. Gangstars Boy. <laughs> It's alright man, mine was Magic Man to you. <laughs> <laughs> like the mages. Throwing that out there, so sometimes we make mistakes when we're a kid, you know? He's rectified that and he's renamed himself to Jinu. Ah. It's a much better man. I agree. I agree. Coming to the top side now. I wonder what Conti was called in Maple Story. It's level 6. 
Does have the Hextech Ultimatum. Now, Jinu is seven. The beauty about Riven is with no items, there is a lot of outplayability. If that's not a word, I'm making it one. Oh, let's go, though. You're right about the, the, the outplay nature of it, because who's going to start this one? You would expect it to be lies on his ultimate. That's the only way you get the true setup. Camille, here we go. Easy. That's Just what I'm out. talking about. Wasted time for Condi. There is, it's so difficult for a Camille to nail you down, because two of your, three abili uh, of your four abilities are dashes. <laughs> Three abilities. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But your dash on your E, that also is a shield. So even if she hits you, you still mitigate the damage that she's immediately coming through. Mm -hmm. And also the Q. You got to see all of that. So how does the Camille hit her? Perfect timing, too, where didn't have vision on the Camille. The moment she pops out, you're already gone. Yeah. Questionable top side gank means that Condi does actually fall to only a 10 CS gap in the jungle. Will now pick up his own blue buff. Look at the blue buff over the side of V5. Ben 4 willing to give it away to Korn as well. That's a happy Gragas. Or nice Gragas, rather. Why'd you give it over to Ergon? You're a Gragas. He's definitely going to be building AP as well. So, Runic Echoes in the cards for Ben 4. Earlier said Cinder Hulk, but it's very rare that we see the Cinder Hulk on Gragas jungles these days. Yeah, it's going to be the Runic Echoes, which is why I expect him to go back bottom lane. It's just so much easier to get the kills on the fiddle sticks. I, that's why fiddle sticks is actually so much a, of an easier uh, target. Yeah. Because whenever fiddle sticks is placed down in the map, and if let's say an early gank forces him to use flash, who do you go back for? Fiddle sticks. Fiddle sticks is only in the meta because after shock has given him fake resistance. <laughs> resistance if the fear comes off. But if you get the kill on him, if you poke him out, or if you just CC him through a gank before the the, the 140 resistance has ever come out then yeah, he's easy to kill. He's always been that easy to kill. His hope is literally that he gets in first and that he controls the fight with Crowstorm and the Fear. That's why if uh, Fiddle6 is far behind, this is throughout reality, by the way, even before Fiddle6 was a support. Mm. You're behind other Fiddle6, then my goodness, what is your point on the map? Your point is to face tank with your ultimate. This is actually read out though, Raz. V5 know there's a fiddle sticks there. You can see Korn right next to the turret as far away as possible. Let's go! Pro Storm's coming in. He will get flashed on Korn. Confident pops the barrier, but he's absolutely demolished. Hardy will tank for one, not two. And Ignite doesn't kill him either. Good dive by LGD. Such good execution. And you knew that Korn understood the situation he was in. He just thought he could outplay. Yeah. He, he thought he could get out of the fear, have the shield from his W, still has the flash, but would, you know, that wouldn't have helped him in that situation. I think what we got out of it was perfect execution. Any worse, and it would have been a trade to RD as well. RD would have fallen. But he doesn't, that's what matters. Especially since the early gank. V5 now with their mid laner down, but coming back to lane. Keen to roam to the bottom side of the map. Y4 just pushing in uh -oh. as Lucian does. Two members here, Kramer is still at turret. Here comes the Justice Punch lockdown. Shielded Duran, body bop, triple flash again, Raz. This time it's Kramer at the bad end. Facts. You know, bring out the Colonel. Every <laughs> single time, summoner spells are up for the bottom lane and Ben 4. Uh -huh. They're used on the bottom lane of Kramer and RD. Yeah. There we go. That's just what's happening this game. I feel bad for them, but that's just life. Kramer understood the pressure, but once again took the risk of going back bot to take the wave because he had RD in transition. Yeah. Oh, what you doing over here? She knew what's the challenges. He's actually the same level as Lies now, but level 9 means Q is max. Yuki comes in to help out as well. They're trying to stop the pickup, but Lies has already got it. Slows down the sign. He ults, but into the two members of V5 oh. on the backside. Ben 4 goes golden as Yuki goes for the 1v1. There's the fear beyond death from Korn, but he can't finish it off as the True Shot Barrage keeps Ben 4 from re-engaging. That was really close from Ben 4. I actually loved what Ben 4 did right there. While he stopwatched, he sent the ultimate to where LeBlanc's possible location was going to be. Yep. If she popped right back to her original place, she would have actually been knocked right back into uh, V5's team. Didn't happen. So at the end of the day, LGD pick up the Rift Herald. They're back on the map with Scion, no less. I think, I think LGD are set up to be able to take a few... Uh, uh, let's see. I don't know where they would actually throw that. I know Scion has it, so he, he would put it topside. Well, hang on, oh, hang on. Pause, no. Kramer, Kramer, Kramer! There's the culling to finish it off. Y4 styling on him. Against his replacement in Hangzhou, Y4 does it in a solo kill. That is insane. Yeah, ah, put the yeah. emote on him. Why not? Why not, man? That's insane to see both Y4 and Jinu flexing in their return match. Solo kill king has got some competitors. Y4 adds another one to the list and this turret. 
RD comes in, the Dark Wind will slow it down, but that is turret plating again, RD. Condi hasn't been spotted out. Hook shot into wall shot right onto lane. Not enough damage here, even with the turret. Dark Wind bouncing back and forth. Fiddly D. The V5 still hold out. They'll be able to push in again. Kramer coming back to lane. One of what makes Ezreal so strong is when he has Iceborne Gauntlet, it seems so hard to be able to penetrate that. Yeah. To get a solo kill on what is the most <laughs> armor an AD carry will have that early on in the but game. But then there's Lucian. And then, yeah. Press the attack, Lucian. You're like, oh, he has a lot of damage. <laughs> it's just, it just stacks up so quickly. So he definitely uh, had his head out too far out. And remember, he lost both of his summoners based off of the dive that he had earlier. That's right. So he's uh, he's wheezing right now. Uh, I don't think Kramer's standing up right. Nope, zero, two, and zero. Tier is stacking as well. Like you said, that Iceborne Gauntlet sits in the inventory, so he'll just be sitting down in the bottom lane. But it's just Arcane shifting out of lane. You saw that little teleport on the minimap. RD is roaming, so he has to play safe. It should be fine for an Ezreal from here on. I say that, but I said that before. It's getting harder and harder to pick on Korn. It was fine earlier before he really had his first base. Oh, they, that's why they're bringing in the extra member. Okay, this is fun. Okay, we're all down. Four members here. Oh, we have three minions. And they're gone. Yeah. All right. Well, at least Lies can tank it for now. But look at the trade-off in turrets. First turret bonus, however small it may be now, goes over to V5. You'll notice as well, V5... Still have a 3k gold lead. Yeah, I think V5 uh, put themselves in a good position because I don't think this Rift Herald is going to have much value. Sure, being able to take that mid lane turret is a good point, but with what was potentially out there, I think the trade off from having both bottom lane tower and now the uh, mountain dragon is better uh, is better off for victory five. Crazy for them to get in and siege as well underneath these turrets. Ooh, blue buff on well. Again, invade there. Y4 picks it up. That's Dragon, that's blue buff, there's Scuttle Crab down the bottom side as well. Condi losing a lot of resources here, considering that Condi was at 1.20 CS ahead of Ben 4. No longer exists, he's pretty much the same. The only difference between these two junglers at the moment is the kill. Yeah, maximizing the punish that they did bot side. I think what V5 have done for themselves, ending the laning phase that early, look at where the lane assignments are currently now placed. That Sure, LeBlanc was picking up the wave bot, but she needs to base early. It's Riven that's picking up bottom lane. It's Lucian and Lei that have now positioned themselves top. And they're going to be able to get to this tower much faster than, let's say, an Ezreal can reposition topside. So yep. I think right now, unless something is done about it, Victory 5 should be able to get a lot of damage on this tower. The left Ezreal mid, Kramer just has to pick up CS and at least mitigate some of these losses. Y4 almost has the Black Cleaver, and that's the difference between maybe being able to die lies, but at this point y4 does a bit of damage towards him more towards himself after the turret this is really early for lgd to be putting leblanc in this lane matchup this is disastrous for yuki to yuki must have so much confidence that he can be able to outplay so bot lane right now is the lane of outplay yeah uh river doesn't want any part of it but that's what they're looking for top lane actually river might find something but we'll look top first it's gonna be an easy dive here no one dying well executed look towards the bot side it's been stopped before it's begun that's an easy trade for V5, that's all they need. Yeah, to be honest, this is uh, a breath of fresh air since the last series where we had two really well executed dives. So no moment for lies to breathe, couldn't use his flash. We're really, really early on when Korn got dove. It was the same thing there, so. Teams are really getting a lot out of their punishes. Well, V5 just have to respond with the bottom lane turret and that's fair at the time being considering how far behind they are. Shredding through this Y4 is just unstoppable at the moment. Along with Lei, who has a bounty, somehow supports are really just carrying the game here today, but that's kind of normal. This turret will be the trade-off. I love the fact that, you know, sure they're responding to the Lucian placed uh, top side, but mm -hmm. also best way to deal with the constant, you know, the bad matchup of Riven and Scion and how well Y4 and Lei are doing in lane, to swap it all. <laughs> Three people on top of Jinu. Jinu can't take the wave unless if it's at his tower. And Scion is going to be fine just picking up his... Efficient, low, go low gold cost of the tank items. Yeah. I haven't seen Sunfire Clay, uh, Cape in some time. So just being able to see... Yeah, I just think it's a bad item pick, actually. <laughs> so uh. I just don't think it's as efficient as it should be. Solo Q? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, okay. Uh, there are so much better. I think going for Righteous Glory would be far more efficient right. here. Um, but back to the point. Mm -hmm. He's just trying to get as much as he can and still be more influential in team fights than Riven can be. 
it's a small lead at this point. Some fight cape or not. Uh, small CS lead I'm referring to. Junior hasn't really been involved in fights just yet. It's coming up to the 20 minute mark. As Baron will spawn. Black Cleaver sitting in inventory. Caulfield Warhammer still there as well. So that's 30% CDR. And Junu still in the side lane. I want to see this Riven fight. I want to see V5 just go for it. Usually we're seeing like slower games with the Rivens too. Uh, mm. When you see FlyQuest play alongside with uh, Viper's Riven, they're a bit of a slower game. So she ends up getting her Yomu's Ghostblade along with her Black Cleaver before fights really ever start. And so you're yeah. like, well, I mean, well, how is he going to deal with these fights, right? But think of Kramer and uh, RD's position in this game. And now think of a Riven on top. <laughs> so those are the major threats that you're going to be looking for. And Condi's not going to have an... I mean, Condi's going to have an easier time, but we've seen how hard it is to escape from a Riven if she's on top of him. So I think uh, Jinu's idea and how to play this game out is to look outside of the lane and to deal with the three carries that are probably going to die to one rotation of Zoltan. Okay, fair, fair, fair. I think Jinu as well is pretty close towards that second item, so that's verging on the edge here for V5. They've got another Mountain Drake to pick up too. Condi is just picking up what he can in the jungle. Now at the moment, you'd be talking and saying, right, well, what's Yuki doing? What's the solo kill king doing? Well, he's 30 CS up. He's fine at the moment. He feels similar to what Jinu's trying to do. Wait for that second item and posture on the edge for a pick. This is the most, uh, I guess, uh, nervous a solo kill king has been though ah uh, yes he's not been put in a position where he can get said solo so kill you're telling me he's nervous against corn but maybe not against rookie well look they picked an ergot against them you know there's no way <laughs> he's getting a solo kill on that one mm. then he looks towards y4 who's not only a fed lucian but a fed lucian with cleanse for god's sakes so who does he actually kill here there's no one so this LeBlanc is going to be a very low kill LeBlanc until there's an actual larger 3v3 skirmish and a larger team fight. Or if this dive ends up happening, but you can see that it's uh, not going to be the case. Yeah, Yuki's at the front of it, Condi, that's right, R&D, RD, walk away. Uh, research and development on the fiddle sticks apparently. That's a Mountain Drake coming up for Ben 4. And V5 still have full control. 5k is the lead. A very quiet 5k at that. But Might grow soon. That oh. first you don't succeed, bring the entire team. It's a lot of people, and here comes Fiddlesticks ulti. They're ulting their way from the last hit of the ward, waiting for the shield to ran still, but Lay's already dead. Corn can't get in. Good pick from LGD, and that seems to be the cost and the toll of the dragon. That's just impatience, because think of it this way. You had not only was a dragon being soloed out by a Gragas, which rarely happens, but Riven sees nobody yep. while she's inside lane. And she is that close to the inner tower. That's good enough information to be like, they're setting something up, guys. I know he wanted to get some vision on Baron. There was no real way that LGD were going to get Baron with their composition. Uh, so just wait. Just wait a little bit. Look, you don't have to do this. You don't have to punch it. You don't have to do put two punches. Don't even put in a third punch. Maybe two. Leave it at two. Yeah. At least he got it. But that's still not worth it. That shutdown bonus went to the side of Kramer. Sorry, Bounty. Uh, and shut down. It was about 450 gold over to late. Now, he's doing the same thing again. I don't know what the it. difference is this time. It's fine. He has his team. You can punch it. Help. Okay. He punched it well. Gragas put in the headbutt as well. So, like, the, that ward is gone. It's safe. You don't have to draw yourself <laughs> towards it. He's going to try another. V5 walking around the Baron. So, LDD still in a gold disadvantage. They need a couple more picks before the reality of challenging that. Uh, for the full 5 on 5 comes in. Now, they are in a good position to start Baron. Think of how many tankier members that are there. Corn is with them. Oh, wow. This is a good stage for a fight. Look at Lei. The Barrage comes through. That'll spot it out. Lei still on the side here. Uh, stopping it is enough for LGD. They don't have to go further than that. V5 can now look to pressure the mid lane turret if they choose. Junu's out of the side lane. He started grouping for this Baron rather than using his teleport. Corn is back on teleport. So I think that since he's back on his teleport, goes towards the exhaust. I would expect him to be on sideline. I think the, the plan is pretty much put in the bin. No one's going to go back towards Baron. But if you're LGD, you're still a little bit, you know, little Monka S. You, you don't know, since they have it last time, you know they want to ramp up the game with the double mountain dragon that they have. Yeah. Getting the ramping of dragons in the triple mountain. That'll be coming up this game. It's V5 for the taking. Greatest selection of dragons, considering that uh, at the moment ocean and fire seem to be taking the top. And one trick teams have done 
throughout the LPL so far is if the third dragon is going to be a mountain dragon, D5 in this situation would shift their priority towards the Baron on the third one. Because Baron's going to be up there. Dragon's going to be coming up, but if LGD have now repositioned and say, okay, we need to stop them from getting triple, in, uh, triple mountain dragon, or in the past, you know, it's been like triple infernal, yep. that priority shifts vision control from LGD bot side, you have the time to rush the Baron top side. So LGD should not. Oh, here we go. That's very true. Double control was dropped down, but a flash burned out by Ben. Four into the fray. What? Lay's there. Everyone wants to engage. It's Jinu on the ribbon. Double stopwatch there. But Lay forces the flash out of Condi. Three firing on the backside is Lucian. Jinu is just having the time of his life as well. Riven can't die. Lay knows that. And Lies will drop to V5, just a perfect team fight. That's when you look back at the playbook and say, what is my job as Lies? Lies goes straight in for the engage. But the entire squishier lineup was left to the wolf, and that wolf was Jinu. Okay, Baron picked up pretty easy right now for V5. 8k gold lead. Y4 just had the time of his life there. Two item Lucian in a fight. The dream has just been set up here for Victory 5. He had so much DPS in this one. This is where you just look at Jinu and Y4 as a duo. The former LGD members, they saw Scion whiffs all the way to the left, and they're like, let's just take him down to the right. Boom. RD obliterated. And you're seeing what Condi on top of that? No, we'll follow you. Takes the kill on the Condi. The rest of the LGD members have to get out of there. At the moment, Jinu might not be doing damage, but he's annoying. So much CC. Has a Yomu second. He's doing damage. He's doing. Oh, hang on. Raz, what did you just say? He's I think he damage. is doing damage. That was the clone that just escaped. Pawn is here. Culling there. Y4 does cancel it. Ultimate doesn't land. Oh, from come Jinu. on. Let's kill Yuki, I say. Oh. Flashing forward. Thumbs up. Gotcha. I just love the fact that the two performing members this game, thumbs way up. <laughs> I'm a match you, he says. Oh, yeah. Is uh, Jinu and Y4. Uh, this is actually just going to be one of your cleaner snowballs. I don't know how LGD is ever going to push this one back. Take a look at Y4. Uh, I mean, Ben4. There's a lot of 4s out here. Ben4 is going to actually going to be trying to look for an engage. Yep. He still has his cast, and that's what he's aiming for. Not for Kramer, but for Lies. Uh, Lies is in the front again. The true shot barrage coming in, but this inhibitor turret doesn't stand a chance. Look at the rest of LGD. Just don't know what to do here. They can't get near them. Just trying to poke as easy as you'd like, but RD now becomes useless as the fiddlesticks not being able to get in the fight. Kondi was kind of in position for a flank here, but I think at this point he's just trying to set up for the next play. They've already lost so much the inhibitor bot side. I think at this point he's going to say, let's take a dragon. We do not want to be on the map at the same time as D5 when Dragon is contested. Yeah. That's just a fight waiting to happen. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. Uh, you know, you already have a bot side pushing against you. So this is very smart for Kondi, taking it away off the map. Yeah, denying the third mount is a big part of that, but also for GD knowing that they'd have to back after that fight. And it started with Yuki getting caught out. Now, I don't know if you said that he does no damage. Well, a lot of damage. All right, maybe he was into a siren. Maybe that was the difference. That was definitely the difference. <laughs> so Yuki does not want to be on this side of the map. The only reason he's on this side of the map is to clear out the wave. And so whenever he's stuck in between a rock and either Jinu, Y4, doesn't matter. He's losing that. Yeah. No way he's getting near them whatsoever. LGD trying to defend this turret, but it's double cannon. Annoying. Yeah. Even Kramer, he won't be able to get this. Oh. Minion does it himself. V5 getting another turret. 10,000 gold now at 26 minutes. And LGD, after their win against IG, after their game win against FPX, a lot of uh, resilience built up by this squad, but you're just seeing V5 overpowering that here in this first game. Yeah, it really is just a game of power here. Uh, there's no way for them to defend this turret now, just because, not because of tankiness. Like, at this point, Lay is their tank. It's the raw damage that they can throw through. Look at RD, if there's any way to come back, is through his ultimate, but he's not finding those windows. Yeah, when I said before that dual six ult might not make a difference, it's because of the way the game's going, but RD can still get onto that back line and prove me wrong. And look but how behind he is. Look at the AP that he currently has in his kit. Shit. Nothing. He's not going to be dishing much damage. Be a pest. Maybe for RD is the goal. Second inhibitor drops. D5. Next Baron could secure the game here. Not even going to see that ocean by the looks of it. Continue to press ahead. Top lane. Not even prioritize at this point. Just going to back again. 
And I think Y4 will be onto his fourth item. Well, almost. Sure. He's getting there. He's getting there. And on top of that, I, just so you look at how Kramer's been building this game, he's not the spell slinging Ezreal that goes, uh, you know, magic boots, magic penetration boots into double tier. Yep. This time around, he's actually playing like the older Ezreal build where he's far more utility based than the damage that you would see from him at the time. So, this moment in time, I'm actually looking at LGD and saying, you're struggling for damage. The Trinity Force is definitely needed. You don't get to see a lot of Trinity Forces on the uh, Camille because it is a, such a large gold sink. It's not It's not bad, but it takes a long time to ramp up. Yeah. But now that he finally has it, he can actually stick around in a fight a little bit longer, which is sorely needed with uh, Ezreal not being able to output the DPS you'd want. Yeah, three items on Kramer right now, and that second tier has not been stacked, nor do you think it will be in this game. Maybe something towards the Lethality item a little bit earlier for Kramer, or... Maybe we start looking at Yuki once again. Artie. Artie. Oh, my oh my god, god. please, <laughs> get this visual bug out of my face! <laughs> out of my face! That was the, one of the worst ones I've seen. What the hell was that? <laughs> oh my lord. I am going insane. Uh, RD is still here. Um, yes, run into five people again so we can <laughs> so just... So we can actually see, <laughs> see it actually happen. There are some movies out there that really do it for me that like legitimately are like, am I crazy? Is this... Like, yeah. put you in a mental in a asylum. I don't remember the name of those movies. Sadly. Oh, come on. Yeah, I know. No. So close. All right. Well, that just hurts to see. That's kind of the summary of LGD's game. Uh, so close. So close, yet so far. And before I was mentioning, before uh, RD decided to make the brush walk, that Yuki, you know, could be a factor here. There's two items on LeBlanc. Um, hasn't found his way to add another number onto his solo kills this game. They are so ready for this fight. Yeah. Uh, LGD oh don't have no. any vision. Flies in first. Thank God. I think I'd like, no. Oh, RD. RD actually might be caught out here. Does he have flash? Yes, but will he survive? Again, yes. Jinu's following this. Yobu's. Oh, oh my God, he missed you both. You play Riven. You should he be able missed, to make that jump. He missed both well huh? Yeah. All right. Next one. Can he do the Baron one? Yes. This is what happens when you become a meta monkey for so long. <laughs> for years, you're forced to play the meta. Oh, no. Well, caught out is Condi. We'll use Hextech Ultimatum, but that's just a waste time. Into the pit now. 2k health. Lies jumps in. A moment for RD. Potentially True Shop Barrage. Get the smite down. Who's going to get Baron? No one's hitting it. Smite eventually does come up. They give Ben four time. But LGD are just too far behind. It doesn't matter that they're able to get the pick on the Urgot. Jinu's still alive. Go, Riven. Go. Kramer tries to get him in the back foot, but Jinu, here he comes, knock him down, doesn't get Kramer, it's the kill by Ben 4, ace in the end, and LGD drop. Yeah, teleport coming through, there's only one objective in mind, that's the game. What a clean bill for Victory 5. Three deaths from Victory 5, recovering off their Vici Gaming, best of three, that felt like it was a hard struggle, but against LGD, the team that beat Invictus Gaming, they looked calm, focused and ready to take it out. If this is anything like the rest of the series, B5 is starting to make a name. They're ready. And it feels like the best you see from Victory 5 is when they allow their individual members to just go. Yeah. To just rush. Pick what they want. Obviously prioritize a composition that makes sense to them. And funny enough, Galio seems to be a major piece for this team. I think that a lot of teams should be looking at how they use Galio. Because sure, you can pick a Riven away from a Galio. You can do anything you want. Like, if you want to yeah. Riven, you don't need the Galio necessarily, but they use it so often to just kind of be that fail-safe insurance policy that if they need a form of engage, Riven can go in and she can follow, have a Galio follow-up and be in the fight a little bit longer. It's a big shift to the LPL that seems to be working out for Lay so far. I mean, one game's a bit too early, but the Galio support, you then mount that up with what Jinu did in the top lane, wasn't really about the Riven that game, I'll say. Because the Riven was a great pick. Yep. First kill, or rather, it, it was an early kill, but it was more about Ben 4 on the Gragas. The, the Gragas pick was fantastic, and it was just pushing its way through this game. Boom, and just a, you know, so clean. clean bill of health. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the subject matter was looking really nice. So uh, I will say, yes, Ben 4 had a very impressive game. You don't get to see that a lot from him in the past because when Ben 4 is brought onto this team, he was known as a highlight hunter, but in yep. terms of just slowly playing the map, that wasn't his skill. That wasn't in his repertoire. 
going up against more methodical junglers have always been his his core weakness. So now going up against Condi, 2017, the best slow playing jungler. Yeah. Sure, he has the lanes to really help him, but in this game, it really felt like he knew what parts of the map that he needed to be in. Bot side was actually like a major focus for him. Uh, you know, good job. Mm -hmm. He understood a lot of times when he didn't need to be there. Early on, level 2 gank, he's like, it doesn't look good for me, so I'm just going to go back and start farming it up and pat the top side. He was very happy to make that trade-off of, of ganks. Okay, I'll lose CS in the jungle. I'll maybe lose out on some of the, the 1v1 pressure yep. if Condi's able to go ahead. But Condi didn't make much of an appearance on the map that game at all. Farmed and farmed, and Ben 4 eventually caught up anyway. And by that time, the rest of the lanes were so influenced that it was like, well, Condi rush, rushes into a lane. You want to go top side? Uh, Jinu's going to kill you anyway. Yeah. Peeks his head in, Jinu's out. Okay, well that's 30 seconds wasted. Can't go mid either, and then bottom lane was just literally a 2v2 solo kill that happened that yeah. was just Y4 taking control. Yeah. So rough stuff there. Yeah, very rough, especially since LGD. Again, coming off the back of a bit of a win streak, a bit of an impressive streak. V5 shut that down immediately, and going into game two, new questions to be asked. We'll be right back.